Okay everyone, so for this video, we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to design a simple motor start circuit. Why is this important? Because it's everywhere. When you're running a three-phase motor in any industrial setting, and it's a small motor or it's a low budget application, we don't care about the motor, it doesn't need to start gracefully, it just needs to turn on and turn off. Generally speaking, we're going to use a circuit very similar to this. So what I'm going to go through is what is a motor starter, or also known as a contactor, what is a relay, how to check your push buttons, how to latch your start circuit, and then I'll just build it and we'll do a little demonstration. So first and foremost, your electrical schematics are the basis of pretty much everything we do, ladder logic. So for this circuit, I'm going to use line 1, 120 volts, and I'm going to use my neutral. Generally, your neutral is going to be tied to ground somewhere, but we'll leave that for another video. So, this right here is the coil of our motor starter. This is a motor starter. It's also called a contactor. You energize the magnetic coil at A1 and A2, and when you do that, it pulls in, and when this pulls in, there's a set of metal back in here, a set of contacts, that closes L1, L2, and L3. It closes that circuit, so any power that you have up here, any voltage, is going to go through your contactor, and in this case, it's going to go through an overload unit that's going to look for short circuits or any problems. If you're, gen if you're using too much power, the circuit's going to trip and you would have to reset it. Okay, so this is the coil of our motor starter. Again, A1 and A2 is generally the coil on relays and motor starters. And let's see here. We are going to utilize the overload auxiliary contacts on the overload but we can cover that a little bit later and what we're going to do to start our motor again this is just the control circuit we're going to have a push button we'll call it start and that is going to be open normally open and then when we push it down it's going to energize that circuit and bring your 120 volts further towards your coil and then we'll also have a stop button that's well let's think here stop button is going to be energized but when you push down on the stop button it will open up that circuit and it will cause it to stop so you got a normally open start and a normally closed stop so let's wire that up real quick all right so we're getting into the wiring portion you can see down here i have my multimeter set on resistance or ohms and remember we said we wanted normally open start push button so normal state means out of the box from the factory when you hold it in your hand what is the state so that looks like a set of closed contacts let's find the open ones that one seems open then when i push in that button Yep, I'm pushing that in, it's reading. We got very low resistance. So this right here is our set of normally open contacts on this green push button. So we'll use that one for our start. And this one here, I already know I'm cheating a little bit, is, let's see here, that's a closed circuit. You can see the ohms reading, it's measuring. That's our resistance is zero. Push that and it opens up. So that'll be our start. And then, like I sort of discussed, this is our overload. So when this says, hey, you're too high of current, it will open up this normally closed set of contacts right there. And that's what you got. So let's keep going with the video. Okay, to review, we got our motor start circuit right here. Our start button is normally open. So that is going to be dead until we push that in, making it into a closed state. Bring our 120 over here. As long as our stop push button is not pushed, that will continue because it's normally closed. And that will go over A1 and A2, which is our load. 
Um, and then we're going to go through the thermal overload unit contacts. Long story short, if there is a high current overcurrent situation, this set of contacts is going to open up and kill our circuit. Um, let's just draw this down here. So what I want to do is put something in there. So I am actually going to run a little fan. It's not the symbol for fan. It's just my drawing. I'm going to run a little fan through the contactor, through contactor one. So let me show you this circuit here again. Start, then stop. A1 and A2 is the coil. Then a oh, quick recap. Let's see here. Power coming in through the start push button, through the stop push button, comes up into A1, which is the power for our whoop, power for our contactor. When you energize A1 and A2, it's gonna create make this electromagnet suck in and close the contacts of everything going through L1, L2, L3, which is our load. So we energize the coil. And then on the neutral side of that coil off of A2, we come over here through our overload uh, normally closed contacts. So normally this will be fine if we have an overcurrent situation that will open up our circuit and kill it dead. And then we go back to neutral. That's our pump start circuit. Down here I added a nice little fan so I can demonstrate properly. So I'm going to plug this bad boy in and let's see what happens. Oh. Here it is, people. The tension is mounting. I'm plugging it in. And surprise, surprise, nothing happened. Let's see what happens when we hit our start button. Woo! Our contactor pulls in and our circuit energizes. And then when I let go of the start button, it turns off. But I don't want that. I want this to stay on. But it won't. Why? Here's why. These are momentary push buttons here. When you push this in, this circuit closes. When you let it go, that circuit opens. So what we can do is we can make a parallel branch. And when you say a parallel branch and controls, I want you to think or. We're going to make an or branch. So we want this to be started. You want the push button, the start button pushed in or see a1 we'll call it a1 usually it's m1 motor one so you want the start button pushed in or our motor to already be running and that's going to latch that circuit so you get this 120 to come through and when this starts running the contact on the side of that contactor is going to suck in and we're going to be able to take this path to complete that circuit so let me wire that up real quick and we'll give it a try Okay, so I wired it up. If you look right here, we're literally tying in, in parallel to our start push button. So I quite literally put two wires on either terminal on the start push button and ran them over here, whoop, ran them over here to the normally open auxiliary contacts on this motor. And I can actually demonstrate for you real quick how that works. This is not to be confused with the normally closed overload contacts. This unit down here opens up when the motor is running at too high of power. If something's wrong, this will open up and open that up. But this is the overload unit. This unit up here, this is your contactor, AKA motor starter. I can show you right here how this little doohickey works. Put my meter there, I'm measuring resistance and when you hear normally, it means the normal state out of the box. So I'm measuring the resistance between this set of normally open contacts. And when I suck in that coil, you see you get a short circuit, closes the circuit. So we're going to use this blue circuit in parallel with the other start button. So once it starts, this is going to hold it on until we interrupt it, which would be accomplished by pushing the stop button. So here we have it. We have our complete circuit. We hit the start button. It sucks in. It's now latching through the blue circuit. So we energize it. And now we got 120 volts traveling in parallel to our start button 
over to our stop button, which again is normally closed. And then that comes over to A1, which pulls in that contactor. If we have an overcurrent or a trip, it opens up that circuit. It actually opens up the neutral side of that circuit over here. And when that happens, you'll actually still have 120 volts traveling through the coil and over to this one wire um, because it's charged, there's voltage, but there's no path for current to flow. So that's all charged, but there's no current flowing through that coil. So again, let's see here. And we relatch the circuit, we start it, it's latched in, we're running good, everyone's happy. We hit that stop button, we disengage, taking out this latch when we open that circuit and this bad boy running through the contactor is good to go. Let's take a second look at the prints. Um, just so you guys know, this is somewhat dangerous, so please don't try this at home. I do suggest if you're ever working with electronics at home, try to start out with 12 volts. Um, when I started doing this type of work, I would get shocked a lot. I've uh, learned some lessons and I've grown the wiser, but uh, you know, you don't have to go through that. But uh, anyways, I appreciate you guys watching my channel. I love controls. I love instrumentation. Obviously, this is a new type of video for me. So, uh, yeah, just let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.